Andy, new to this sort of senior role, you've got a big job on your plate launching this campaign so soon. How are you going about that? Well, I've been the deputy uh, domestic abuse lead for the last 12 months. Actually, it's a big challenge, but it's a big honour to be given this job. Um, I represent uniform policing. We're the people who go first to the, to, the, to the response to these things. We're the first investigators, the first on the scene, we're the first contact with victims. It's so very important that we get that right, and we do it right, and we take positive action. So we are the right person to champion you know, our new responses to domestic abuse through uniform policing. What, how are the police going to be dealing with this? Because it's been an issue for police forces across the UK, hasn't it, about how they really tackle and have that first point of contact with victims and perpetrators? So there's two things. First of all, we actually have to get the first point of contact right when the victim themselves call us. We need to get there quickly, we need to be understanding, we need to be thorough and we need to be supportive. We need to take positive action and we get that. This is about how we're going to respond to other people who are giving us now information and intelligence about what they suspect the perpetrator might be doing. We need to give them confidence that we'll treat what they tell us sensitively and appropriately, that we're not just going to jump in with both feet, because it is about protecting the victim here, but it is again about taking positive action. And from my experience, if you think domestic abuse is probably happening to a friend or neighbour or colleague, it probably is, and we'd much rather you told us about it. It's my job to show the uniform policing that that's what we're expecting them to do, as in the colleague, the neighbourhood, the family member, while the least we can do is respond positively, join the piece of the jigsaw together and take positive action against the perpetrator. How serious do you think the issue is of domestic abuse in Bristol right now? I actually think it's massive and I think it's far wider than even policing and the support agencies and the council can even understand because there's a whole range. It's not just about people arriving at a GP or somewhere else with bruises on, you know, on their body. This is a lot of the far more subtle controlling elements. Are they being harassed? Are they being literally being stalked by their partner? Are there any money withheld? Can they not go out with their friends? Are they now beginning to withdraw into themselves? Abuse takes a whole range. We need to learn as the police that it's more than just the physical attributes. We need to investigate in that way. And that's what we're trying to educate the public. You know, have a look at your friends, your colleague, your family member. Are they suffering in this way? Has something changed? Be supportive, be brave, call public stoppers, call somebody and let them know so we can have a chance to take positive action. How easy is it though to prosecute, uh, you know, charge and prosecute perpetrators who are doing domestic abuse? as you say, that isn't so uh, obvious in terms of bruising and, you know, violence. I can't pretend that it's easy because it's not, and a lot of the time we do rely on the evidence from a victim. And although we can go ahead with cases without that, it can be difficult. I can tell you something, we can't prosecute somebody we don't know about. There are other powers that we have, so called the domestic violence protection orders, the example is where we can take positive action even without support sometimes of the victim. But we have enough evidence on a balance of probabilities, we can get an injunction for a period of time, up to 30 days normally, against an offender, which gives us time in the support services and the victim services to work with, uh, with that victim and try and persuade them that there is a better way to get them out of that abusive relationship or to get them to support maybe a, you know, some other kind of criminal justice intervention. So there's lots we can do. It is challenging, but we can't do it if we don't know about it. Do you think that you've got the resources to be able to cope with what could be a real surge in the amount of reporting that goes on because you are encouraging people external to that relationship to essentially report it? Policing is always a job. But this is about vulnerable people, it's about vulnerable victims. What policing is about is actually servicing them. If it means that some other policing uh, you know, things that we have to do have to wait a little bit, so be it. It is about who is at greatest need, who is at greatest threat. We need to deal with that first. And again, I don't pretend that's easy, but it's my job to say, let's be smart enough to know which call to take first, where to be first, and where to stay and be thorough rather than just going away to the next call that comes in, because that's the right thing to do. And long term, we won't change this unless we do something about it. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you.